the Comox Valley, we have a foodie culture, which means not only do we enjoy good food, but we want to know where does it come from, how is it made, and how does it add to our sensory experience. I love good food. I've worked in a cooking school. I love trying out new recipes, having people over for dinner, or sharing food at potlucks. Here in the Comox Valley, we're going to show you some of the local places that are my favorites. We're going to start on 5th Street with Hot Chocolates and owner Jordan Marshall. We've been a part of downtown for going on 29 years. Um, it was our first location uh, when Sherry and Deanna started the business off of Demon Island. Um, it was the ideal location then because we're not really a store that would go into a mall. Uh, and there wasn't really a, there weren't a lot of locations. So downtown was the place for us. And over the years, um, it's, it's really symbiotic. I mean, we appreciate the foot traffic that downtown brings. And, you know, we, we, we reinvest. We love to put a nice shine on things. I've been driving by our flowers this year, and I gotta say it's our best year ever for the flowers outside. Studies have shown that when you buy from an independent, locally owned business, that your money stays within that local economy. Local business owners actually provide nonprofit organizations with 250% more support than large businesses. One business that located in the Comox Valley was Tree Island Yogurt and they came specifically for the foodie culture. Let's look back at Tree Island Yogurt when they first started up. Yogurt has been around since the early 1600s, and since it saved the King of France, I think it's good for us too. Yogurt originally came to France, and it was from a sultan from the Ottoman Empire that gave it to the king. And it was because I think he had overconsumption or something like that, so too much good stuff, and he needed to heal his digestion. And a couple of months after consuming you know, this wholesome yogurt, He's feeling like he's on top of the world again. When Scott and Marissa went to Paris, they discovered a whole new culture that they brought back so they could develop their own culture. Yeah, my husband and I are very interested in cultural history. So I really am excited to be working on a fermented food. This is yogurt is a very old fashioned food um, that was made before the time of refrigeration. And that was a time when people were more in tune with um, bacteria, um, with fungi, with different things that were, were happening um, and were more connected to their food as it aged. Getting local milk from local cows, making local yogurt, is one of the reasons why Marissa and Scott chose the Comox Valley because we are a local foodie culture. We're very fortunate to have um, sourced milk here in the Comox Valley. Uh, I mean, one of the reasons that brought us to the Comox Valley was was sort of the uh, food culture and and the you know really excellent um, agricultural opportunities. So you know, starting from the milk, but all of our ingredients, we we focus on trying to source the the materials locally or the, the inputs locally. For more information on Tree Island Gourmet Yogurt go to treeislandyogurt.com. From Royston, this is Judy Murakami. Another story we did in the past was Legato Gelato, which is just down the road from Tree Island Yogurt, and they work collaboratively with Tree Island Yogurt in their brand new facility. This is where it all started at Snapdragon Farm. Karen Foraker and Jackie Ayton have been raising goats for 17 years and like any venture, they started out small. Uh, well, partly the goats, initially we actually started off with like eight, and part of it was lactose intolerance. So every time you have cow anything, it's a problem. The goat started off as just a hobby, and the fresh milk is really good. But also, once we got goats, they're just fun. They're naughty, they're curious, they're friendly. You're making sure they've had their shots, you've making sure they're getting their supplements, making sure they're getting the right amount of feed. It's a lot of work for that first eight weeks, but it's really worth it. And there's a lot of people doing it and doing it very well. And uh, there's nobody making gelato. 
So we figured that was something we could do. Legato gelato is made from only fresh organic ingredients and is lower in fat and calories than regular gelato. Where can you find this amazing product? At the moment, we're at the uh, Comox Valley Farmers Market on Saturday mornings uh, and at Weinberg's at the Buckley Bay Ferry Terminal, the round in the bottom. She's got some too. And down in Victoria at the Pepper Foods in Cabra Bay. 17 years later, how do Jackie and Karen feel about their goats? It's, it's really fulfilling, you know, being able to take care of the critters, raise them up. Um, I actually even show, so we show some of the goats. They're, these are um, Toggenbergs, they're registered purebreds. If you'd like more information on local artisan Legato Gelato, go to their website, legatogelato.ca. From Fanny Bay, this is Judy Murakami. Happiness is life, served up with a scoop of acceptance, a topping of tolerance, and sprinkles of hope, although chocolate sprinkles also help. This is from the Spiritual Chocoholics website on Facebook. It, it's about three different teams to make chocolates, and the, bit, the head bakery team, and then the, the front end that represents it. Um, so yeah, if, if we don't have all of those things in place, just service or just product, you've got to have the whole thing come together. And then ideally when folks come in, they're experiencing something that lifts them up, makes them feel maybe like they're, I wouldn't say somewhere else, because you are here in the Comox Valley and this has been here that long. Um, but we've always prided ourselves on, on possibly giving you an experience that you could maybe be having in Paris or in Santa Cruz or wherever it happens to be that's special. Looking back at another story we did on Royston Roasting, we're going to talk to Diane about coffee in Royston. Did you know that Royston has a roaster? You can come seven days a week to the Royston Roaster Coffee House, Monday to Sunday. Okay. So the roast is all ready. This particular roaster came from Turkey and it's the very first uh, roaster the company has ever sold and had in Canada. And they've been making roasters since 1944. It's a gas fired unit. This is still in the crate. We yes. just got it on Friday and I was just starting to work on it. Right and off the boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This year, Gary and Diane will be going personally to Mexico and Costa Rica to meet up with farmers and buy their coffee. Everyone is treated very fairly there, and bringing back the coffee, they get to do fundraising for local charities. Fair trade uh, means that the farmer has received the proper price, and uh, no one was, has been taken advantage of, of the chain of hands that comes up from the, uh, from the actual picking of the coffee and the growing of the coffee to the final product. Last year, over 1,400 pounds of coffee were roasted right here on site. Well, when we looked at our roasting business and we looked at our marketing and advertising, we felt uh, that uh, as opposed to buying a $500 page ad in a fancy magazine, um, we would just give our time and our coffee and do private labels for any fundraiser. So I don't think there's ever been anyone that's asked us for our help or time or coffee that we haven't jumped on board and at least offered door prizes or gift baskets and everyone loves to get uh, a bag of coffee and has no problem dishing out a little bit of money for something they're going to really enjoy. What does it take to make a great latte? Diane also offers barista training preparing people to work in any coffee shop of the world. For more information, go to bccoffee.ca or look for the Royston Roasting Company on Facebook. From the Royston Roaster Cafe, this is Judy Marikami. We're going to catch up with Dave now from Wayward Distillery on how they have worked with Royston Roaster to create a brand new product. Diane from Royston Roasting Company, she uh, blended up a custom roast of coffee and espresso for us and uh, we blended it with some high alcohol uh, cocoa nib extractions and we made this really nice coffee liquor, 33% uh, alcohol, low in sugar, but high in coffee. Yeah, it was, uh, it was great. And do we have any left? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, 
It, uh, we were surprised. We expected it to last uh, a month or two, but uh, nine days and it sold out completely. Are you going to make some more? I would love to make some more. I'm just trying to find some time and some alcohol to do it, yeah. And now we're going to look back on the origins of Wayward Distillery in Courtney. Did you know that you can actually make vodka from honey? Here in Courtney, we have a distillery that is making vodka, and they're located right here on Moray Avenue. Honey was a fun one for us. We started uh, doing fermentations at home, traditional fermentations. We made some meads, some beers, some wines, and once we got a handle of the actual fermentation process, honey is a really nice thing to work with. It makes a really nice product. Uh, when we started our distilling plan, we were going to go with traditional wheats and, and grains and potatoes, but uh, like my wife said, there was a, a large shortage of grain. We have a, one of the nicest whiskey distilleries in the country, 25 minutes up the road, and we really wanted to try something different. So we started doing some experiments and we figure mead is an excellent beverage going in. It must taste excellent coming out. And uh, I, think, I think it does. So everything kind of came together just right for that. Uh, we, uh, it's a 250 liter still. Uh, a lot of other stills are up in the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 liter range. Uh, we want to stay small, we want to stay local, we want to stay craft. Uh, a 250 liter still is a good <laughs> for us. It's a maintainable level of work that we require, that we're required to do to run it and keep our vodka engine up and, and going, so. This is Judy Mirakami for Shaw TV at Wayward Distillery. Here at the Farmer's Market, the vendors not only collaborate with each other, but they combine their products and abracadabra, a new taste sensation is born. Marla Limousin of Blue Moon Farm Winery and Cider Works is big on collaborating not only with their blueberries, but they have a mobile apple press for their cider and a dining room that regularly holds fundraising dinners and showcases local artists. I mean, vodka lends itself to anything really to add with it. So we're working with some of the raspberries. Uh, Dave and I want to get together and do some blueberry um, infusions. So we're looking at how to do that. The Blue Moon blueberries are also featured in one of the newest vendors to the market, Ivan's Truffles, which are handmade, ethical, and high quality. He's at ivanstruffles.com. Having the market downtown on Wednesdays is a great way to get people to shop locally for fresh food and specialty items. Around the corner at Hot Chocolates, Michelle Henry is the HR manager who knows that repeat customers come not only for the great product, but for a fun and memorable escape from the world outside. And that requires long-term staff who are well-trained. I think we create, we have a business here that employs a lot of local people, which the better, the, the more people that shop locally support the businesses downtown, which enable them to hire more people locally. Um, the busier we are, the more hours we have to offer, and we can keep people employed, and we can teach new skills, which is really fun, because you don't find a chocolatier off the street, and you don't actually often find a cake decorator off the street, so it's really fun to be able to teach people new things and, and create new products and contribute to just the valley itself with anything from donations to employment. This next segment shows that everyone can get involved in making the world a better place through fair trade products and young Onyx Ogilvy shows how he made a connection and a difference between the Comox Valley and Assam, India. Who could have guessed that buying fair trade tea for Christmas presents would lead to a trip to India? That was a huge life altering experience um, and I think a lot of it had to do with being a mother and taking my then nine year old child. To see a completely different reality. For most nine year olds in the Comox Valley, dreams may include playing soccer or finishing a treehouse. 
But for Onyx, what made him decide to go halfway around the world and help kids in India? I was there, I saw a lot of tea gardens, and they were use, and they were using pesticides with the, and the mothers had the, had their kids on their backs, and they were picking the tea leaves. And while I was there, I also worked on building schools for the kids there and building gardens. Leanne Vaughn ended up being on the board for Fertile Ground, the importer of fair trade tea, and took her nine-year-old son to some of the meetings. Onyx was quite surprised to see photos of the children his own age working in the tea plantations with their mothers and not in school. They didn't have much where I, my room is extremely messy and I have tons of junk in it really so that, it just, they don't have much at all and we have tons and that kind of made me aware of how much our cultures are so different. I had been working with Fertel Ground for a little while and Onyx had known about some of the work that I'd been doing and he'd, been, he'd seen some of the pictures. Um, he decided that he wanted to get involved at some level and over a course of time he and three other children from the valley here started what they called the Kids to Kids project. They had been collecting um, money through a variety of ways, collecting bottles um, through their schools to try to help support the kids that uh, of a lot of the families that work in the tea plantations. And having Onyx and his mom come with us a couple of years ago was a really wonderful experience, not only for um, Onyx, but for the children there to be able to see that, um, in fact, Onyx works in the soil with his hands and he knows how to make compost. and. Farming is actually something that people in the West are passionate about. Last year, students in the Comox Valley raised money to purchase desks, school supplies, and water filters for small village schools located in an area where many families have been displaced by flooding. I like the animals that they have there and the plants. I mean, I like bananas and uh, going out on long hikes through rolling uh, hills. So whether you're a university student who's interested in coming as part of your school curriculum or you're someone who's retired and wanting to have a working holiday, Fertile Ground has really been really pleased to be able to provide an opportunity for the people in Assam to get to know who we are, for us to get to know more about them and for us to share our love of caring for the environment, producing good food and uh, enjoying learning something about people from the other side of the world. If you'd like to support the Kids to Kids project or find out how you can volunteer, go to the website. From the Comox Valley, this is Judy Murakami. It has been said that you may need a lawyer once in your life, a doctor once a year, but a farmer three times a day. Dr. Thierry Rain was once head of biotechnology for Agriculture Canada, so he's no ordinary farmer but he does grow the biggest raspberries I've ever seen. Here's a look back at a show we did on Innisfree Farm. Building community with good food for Innisfree Farm is the real economy. I think returning back to the source of our medicine, the plants, is really important. I'm here at Innisfree Farm in Royston, and they produce wonderful food, excellent workshops, and a herbal garden for healing practitioners. I, I came here last summer after trying my first semester at university and that environment wasn't where I was meant to be and and I came here and it was like landing down at home where I, where I really needed to be. Having great food, workshops for students, horticultural programs, and healing gardens and consultations is a total picture a balanced life. Thierry Vane is the master gardener and he provides all the wonderful fruits and vegetables that go into the community supported agriculture box. And when you feed the soil really well, watch the magic. According to Thierry, it all starts with the soil. The microorganisms, the fungi, the bacteria, the nematodes, all the life in the soil, they're hungry. And you know what they eat? They eat exactly the same kind of food we do. They want roots, they want your compost, 
they want leaves, dead leaves, they want grass clippings, they want anything that's alive or used to be alive. Chat Chow is a certified herbalist and she provides workshops as well as consultations with a healing garden as well as a herbal garden. Well, it, it's, it's a bit of an artificial divide in a way because just about everything that grows on this property is medicinal, including what you might think of all the culinary herbs. I see them as medicine as well. But this garden that we're in right now is designed as an apothecary or medicinal garden. So not only are the plants in here all medicinal, but they're arranged by their uses. That is, there are beds for the nervous system, beds for the lungs, beds for the heart, so that I can bring students in here, I can bring patients in here. The permaculture movement tells you, the, the motto of the permaculture movement is mulch, mulch, mulch. That's it. Mulch, mulch, mulch. Mulch. Put it on. Put it, you know, when you walk in the forest, you don't see the forest floor. It's always covered with dead leaves and branches and whatnot. Same thing. That's what you want to do. If you'd like more balance in your life, go to innisfreefarm.ca. From Innisfree Farm in the Comox Valley, this is Judy Murakami for The Daily. I hope you've enjoyed the program on the foodie culture of the Comox Valley. We've given you a snapshot on some of the contributing growers, how products are made, the people involved, the benefits of connections and collaborations that are good for economies both local and far away, and putting a smile on our faces. From the Comox Valley, this is Judy Mirakami for Shaw TV.